all of us have this intuition, I am. I, awareness or consciousness, exist. And this I amness is a name of God, one of the names of God. The basic, there's a basic, an intuitive um, sense within everyone. If I say it's the intuition or the feeling, I am, but not with form, beyond form. If the sense I am in you is not embracing the form, like the body form, not embracing anything like that, you can take a look at it now. And uh, if I say, <clears throat> sit in conscious uh, awareness of this wordless, no, I say, I amness, but not the concept or the words I am, and not any form, just that which by which you know you are. And just to sit with it as much as you can. Okay, no? so it, may, it may feel very, very difficult thing to do, because there's no visuals. I'm not giving you any visuals. Does it need visuals? So what is it? Don't don't answer. Let the question come. What is it that, by which I'm I'm using the term the the sense, I am, just the sense I exist. Actually, I am means I. I what exists? I consciousness exists. That's what it really means. But it's not a it's not a, a conversation. It's not a conversation with us. Something else. It's like a, like a message within you, an announcement. This I amness. It's always there. Some may regard it as a kind of pulse. This this I am. This I I. Am means to be, but that which exists. I exist. I what exists. I awareness or consciousness exist. This is why I put it to be the most uh, basic principle, universal. No one told you you exist, not even your parents had to tell you you exist. And no one gave you the, the, the name I. Everyone knows I. It's so universal, it's not even known as a name. Only it says in some scriptures, uh, this I amness, is a name of God, one of the names of God. And all of us have this intuition, I am. And what does it point to? Is it the person? Because the person is perceived in it, in the space or the, uh, the vibration of I am, the sense of person, which is the most intimate knowing, is the sense of being a somebody. But the I am itself, the I amness, the vibration I am, or the intuition I am, even not the words I am. The words are only an indication, maybe a, f- a pointing finger I am, is what. Can this be observed? Normally, if we speak of observing, it's a dualistic function, one thing observing another thing. Can there be a non-dual observation or knowing? Don't force, don't force. Because what I'm pointing to is already here, so we don't have to force to get it, so just to you see. Can it be recognized by something apart from itself? If this, if you engage like this, even attempt to, 
even if it feels that there's a failure when this question is put internally and mind pre- pre- presents some response to it, and these responses are rejected because the responses are also of the mind, so they come and go in the presence of this I amness itself. If we can sit like this already, it will introduce something that cannot be spoken. A self verification. No visualization necessary, no imagination necessary. Why? Because this is one's fundamental base. It is there throughout all the traffic that comes through the mind and the form and the world internally and externally. All that comes is passing through or in front of this presence, this basic presence, and nothing sticks. Maybe because of the faculty of memory, some things may linger and appear to be, yes, yes. But memory also is not permanent, and is highly subjective. And this is also perceived in the I amness. Is it worth discovering this? You see? Those who meditate know this principle. By staying with this, and I don't want to say what you will find. I would love to hear from you. Maybe it's not even what you find, but what you don't find is also good. The noisy world. The sense of separation, painful separations, yearnings, desires, attachments, all these things, they fade in the presence of this self-awareness. Is this self-awareness a happening? Did somebody give it? And did someone receive it? Can it be categorized? Is it hidden? Or hiding? Is it the possession of anyone or anything? It is this that the term self knowledge. Term self knowledge indicate this. A knowledge that doesn't have uh, uh, a conceptual packaging. Some would not call it knowledge at all. And some would say, of all things knowable, this is the one thing to know. But the funny thing is, here, the knower and the known are one. You can find yourself, you can find out. But there is a force acting upon it, uh, to avoid this encounter. A kind of a pulse to go back to the mind, and to the mind will hear, in this opportunity of looking, mind will offer innumerable entertainment. But I say, whatever they may be, 
they will be also showing up as mere visitors inside this unchanging field. It's not a dead field, it's not like dead space or something. It's pregnant with aliveness. Harmony. Your highest joy. Not a joy that is reflected from something else. Can you see as I'm speaking? Okay. Did it come from somewhere? Is it protected by something? And can it be lost? And by whom would it be lost? From whom would it be lost? Jörg, OK. You have another microphone there. Okay. One moment, I'll give you, they will give pastors mic. Mm-hmm. You asked if it is where, where it is coming from, if it is a happening or whatever. For me, it, it is the essence of being. These vibrations are constitutive for being. It's just the, the core of being. That's how I have found out. Well, we can, uh, we can go further and talk about the core of being and core of being. It would arise here as the Absolute, as, as a core of being. But can we look at the sense of beingness or of um, the sense of presence? Mm. If you if you woke up at seven o'clock this morning, I say at six fifty nine fifty nine, what was your state? A second before awakening, what was your state? When awakening happens, when the phenomenal waking state happens, means that consciousness has sprouted. You become conscious. When consciousness comes, you become aware of yourself as a living being. Prior to that, not. So when a consciousness comes, with it comes the the awareness of self comes with it. And it's not yet a person. Just like if I give an example, if in during the night you have to get up to go to the loo, you may go to the toilet and perform whatever functions are needed without identity. But in the morning we get up. And then certain things trigger a remembering of self. And you become like again a living entity with purpose and intention and time and otherness. But first the first arou- first arising must be the intuition, I, I am, the knowingness that I exist, which was not needed for deep sleep. So when this I am knowingness comes, my point is that it comes. If it comes, it must come into something that was already there, and must be more subtle than even I am. I am saying this because you mentioned the core of this I amness, which you could say prior to even the arising of the I amness. Through the I amness, the world can be perceived. The function of the senses can play. Memory, time, self, other, all of that can come in with the knowingness I am. And you know, if I can say, this I amness through which we know the world and time and relationships have sorrows and joys are experienced. If you're running through a door that's you didn't calculate the height of it and you bump your head, it can remove this I amness. Or some chemical in the body can take away this I amness. 
also. Even this, how can it be the absolute? What can remove absoluteness? I wasn't ready to talk about this. I say, first, let's get onto the safe shore of I amness. Escape from the samsara of I am this personless. Because when we feel that the the river or ocean of samsara of names and forms and personhood state is all there is, then you make the best use of it. You'll find the good and bad, the up and downs in it. But when you are discovering the beingness, which is a higher, a higher vibration than the I am the person, then in coming into the awareness of being, then you begin to see how heavy the state of person was. Can you see that? Yeah. Now, now comes while we are experiencing the state of beingness. Hmm, now we're wishing to fully pull into the beingness because we see the cost of the the becomingness of the the, the personal hmm, fluctuating state of personhood. For some, for others, not. For some, the fight is not. Something is fighting to hold on to the, the, the state of personness. And something on the other side is can't wait to be free of the grip of personhood. Because even in the in the process of awakening into being, the mind doesn't completely go away. Come, come, come. And come with the stronger enticements also for a bit. Anybody can verify the two like this? First, cross the shore of samsara, safe land of beingness, and stabilize in the beingness first, so that all the potential and possibility of fluctuation states that come, you can somehow by holding to beingness, they, they autocorrect, or they come into a balance, uh, a harmony, just in the power of you not, uh, not joining those forces by going into personhood. So that's the stage uh, before awakening. That's the candidate for awakening. In the state of personhood, there are there are different stages of awakening also. Awakening from very gross states of strong personal identity and the complexity of that world becoming more refined, meaning more uh, more space, more attraction to higher states of consciousness. It's an evolution also in that state. But what I pointed out yesterday was that in that um, mode of consciousness, you may go very, very high, but still retain uh, the sense of uh, autonomy and individuality on a personal basis. No? Meaning that uh, you would not be able to genuinely uh, come to the conclusion that I and the beingness are one. Beingness is like a state I go to. I make use of. Because the I is standing more on the strength of I am the person. Hmm. Let's keep it simple, keep it simple. So it's um we're not creating here, you know? You're only cleaning the mirror. Um, earlier, you mentioned uh, being on the safe uh, ground of uh, beingness, or the safe shore of beingness, and uh, relative to the mind. Yeah. So if he's like in that st- in that state or in that place, um, the sense I am is lighter and less troubled by personhood. Yes. When I look from there, and I say that. Okay, in beingness or as beingness, I've never moved. I've never 
done anything. Um, it has always been. But just know you, you, you also mentioned that it's um, like a bridge. Well, I mentioned like this because um, if you have a, a, a biography, an autobiography of yourself, it's not of a 24 hour a day life. It's maybe the duration of your waking state, maybe say, um, say 16 hours. Let's let's call a number. I don't, I'm not measured it different from different people. Say 16 hours is your. That's your life. That's where your biography is going to be written about the 16 out of 24 hours of your life, of your day. Um, so and that's when your spirituality is being practiced within that gap. It can even follow through in the dream also, but. Mm. It's during that state, say from you get up in the morning from seven o'clock, you go to bed at ten o'clock, for instance, like that. At ten o'clock, the the the, the movement towards sleep comes. It means that the the shop of perception is closing. Fair enough. Because that the, the consciousness is also um, needs rest from the functioning of perception and the activity coming out of it. God gives that. So then, so that that is the conscious. That is the this, the space of I amness. When deep sleep come, the I amness subside. No, so any state that subsides cannot be the eternal state. It is the highest state. It's the highest state. And all that is in the dynamic world of names and forms, comings and goings, evolution, all of these things, which we constitute the, the, the urge of the human consciousness to evolve within that state. When you go to bed, you don't go to bed to evolve in consciousness. The consciousness takes a rest there. Um, we can't describe that. All I can say is, we we may be taught to observe your mind with detachment, and it brings a certain elevation inside being. At some point, you may be told, observe your beingness. Is it possible to be to be just aware? We started today like that. Can you sit with the the, the value of? The message of the the I amness vibration in you, without giving it a shape, and it becomes something very subtle, just like this. Even just by attempting to, you come into a wordless place, and it feels very silent, and and there there's no there are no pages, there's no books there. It's just a quality of being at that. Just by observing. A non-dual observation of beingness. But at some point, that observation is going to become even dualistic. Also, that even the beingness is perceived. When the beingness is perceived, you are beyond the being. We cannot say what it is. There are no books there. There's no. There's no universities. There are no temples there. And rare are are those who. Um, uh, are so drawn to that. Because the mind imagines all kinds of stuff. It's like, why would I be attracted to oblivion? Why would I be attracted to nothingness? You see, like that. Because the nothingness perceived through the mind is not what the nothingness of the heart means. And this uh, ultimate state is here now. Just like when we wake up from person into presence, it's here now. <laughs> You see, the, the, but, the, but the presence has always been the underlying uh, substratum and support, even of the person. And it's more grounded, it's more real than the person. But from the person conviction state, beingness is like, wow, man, that's far out, and so on. You see? So each state, as you evolve, you find, but it's going to be natural. And the thing that I want to say is, however far you go, 
you still know you are. So it means that that basic I am-ness must be here in subtle, subtle form, even now. But the, the, um, the preferred state of I am the body holds, holds a strong ground uh, for a time. And if I say it is a stages of um, awakening that we experience, the strongly fluctuating states, and as you evolve, you get the states are less fluctuating, more even, but there's still something other, there's still an object-subject relationship with them. Mm-hmm. Then gradually comes in towards a subject-subject, I don't know if you call it a relationship. What's beyond the subject, which was partially subject-object, beyond subject-object relationship is what? We can speculate, but you, you cannot give the answer to that. Uh, I guess, I, I, I don't know, maybe I'm asking, like, resting in beingness, doesn't feel like that's it, you know, that that's... Well, mm. fully rest in beingness as beingness. And it will take care of itself. Mm. Just like when it's time to eat, there is, we don't need the mind to go, oh, it's time to eat. Um, and if you used to eat at one o'clock, and uh, your attention is otherwise engaged, you may find you don't eat until three o'clock. And it doesn't matter, somehow. Um, the rigidness, sometimes, in which the person has to conform to its own projection, they may also become you know, different. But not necessarily. Some people become much more organized in their functioning. So I don't want to put down some blueprint that it looks like this. It can be whatever. So rest in beingness as beingness. Don't hold the words too much, and you'll probably find it. But it's it's already the where is the beingness going to come from? You see. Thank you, everyone. Very very good. Very good.